to know Jesus and to have life in all its fullness. I'd invite you to pray for Kang San. He is the first non-Western appointed as general director of BMS. He started at the beginning of last month. I was pleased to say he's still in the office after a month. That's a good sign as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, pray for him. Uh, the, the initial weeks are a, a steep learning curve, I imagine. Uh, uh, the, uh, Kang San and his wife have re relocated to the UK from, uh, from Malaysia. Uh, they have lived and worked in the UK uh, previously, studied here, taught here, and uh, we are delighted that he's come among us. Uh, a breath of fresh air, uh, a new chapter, a new phase in uh, BMS work uh, in, in the years that, that lie ahead. So do do pray for him. Uh, this is a, a, an image of a poster uh, that we produced that tries to explain what our vision is for uh, the next few years, up to the year 2020, uh, anyway. And our, our task is, as God enables us, and with partnership with churches like yours, is to touch and transform a million lives. It's a tall order. And uh, we, we're engaged in those kind of seven different ministries. Uh, the one on the, on the far end, um, relief. That kind of sits on its own in a way because we never know when something is going to go wrong. But we do need to be ready to respond uh, if indeed we can, either directly or through other Baptist partners around the world. But I, I thought I'd give you an update just over a year in um, next slide, please. I'm, I'm not working. Can you? Perfect. Uh, so, an up to you, just over a, a, a year on, and how we're doing against the, the, the targets that we've met. You need to bear in mind, I guess, that uh, some of these targets are never going to be linear. Um, you know, they're going to be, something's going to surge for a while, and then plateau, and then surge again. However, we do need to, to measure up to where we're at so that we know if we need to invest or change direction or whatever. So the first two are behind where we would like them to be, uh, church and education. Um, a year, just over a year in, and uh, we're, we're a little bit behind where we would like to be. So there's some conversations going on about, is that going to change over the next few years? Do we need to do something different, something extra? Um, uh, the next one on justice, again, that's not bad. We're not far off where we want to be uh, with, with that one. And that's all about bringing access to justice for those who are denied it. Um, we have lawyers who are serving as mission workers. We're facilitating lawyers in uh, Uganda and Mozambique, for example, in order to bring uh, a sense of justice to claim land back that's been denied. Uh, so that would be one example. The next two are ahead of where uh, we thought they might reasonably be at this point in time. So that's, that's good news. And, and the final two are just maybe a little bit behind where we would like them to be, but not far off at all. So it's a good start to that faith-stretching target. Yes, there's work to be done. Yes, there are people to be resourced, trained, financed, released into mission and ministry. But we're, we're on our way towards that faith-stretching target. Uh, next slide, please. If you, yeah, well, the, the clicker has given up for, for some reason. So if you could uh, just click on to the next slide. Press the space bar, that'll do the job. Um, back in uh, the middle of last month, we had a bunch of new folk begin their training and preparation for going overseas probably next year. Uh, some of them are there. Uh, you'll see there's color photographs. There's a couple of folks there with kind of silhouetted images. That's because the countries they're going to, uh, we have security restrictions, and we need to be very careful that we don't use their actual names and we don't connect them to BMS directly because that would jeopardize them and the ministries. In, in which they are engaged. But I, just in a general sense, pray for these folk um, over a, a, huge, a huge transition. Uh, imagine packing your house into a few suitcases. 
and living in uh, a college campus again in a study bedroom and then flying to another part of the world to learn the language and learn the culture even before you can get into the, the work and the ministry that you believe God has called you to. So this time of preparation is hugely important for these people. So I would encourage you to, to pray for them. Next slide, please. I'd encourage you to pray for these uh, young folk as well. Uh, they, they took off uh, at the beginning of uh, October, around about the 5th and 6th of October, uh, to those five destinations. They're young people aged between 17 and 23, and they are uh, engaged in BMS's gap year program. The teams are normally three or four young people, and they'll live and work together for six months overseas after a time of training and prep with us, and then they'll come back, and then they'll do that UK tour part of their program that I, I mentioned earlier on. And my challenge here is, if you're 17 to 23, or looking ahead to that age group, how about it? How about it? My privilege is meeting these young people when they come to us in September and before they head overseas, and then meeting them again uh, at Easter time when they come back, and just seeing what God has done in and through them. Some research has been done on short-term mission, and I'm afraid it doesn't always have the impact that we hope it will. It kind of starts from where the person is, and then there's a, a kind of mountaintop experience uh, that, that coincides with their time overseas. But all too often, that, that mountaintop experience dissipates too quickly. That's a reality. And, and the, the task for those of us who, who engage in short-term mission is, is how to make the, the impact of the mission visit overseas last a lifetime, not just a few weeks beyond. The same research was applied to action teams, and the graph goes up in much the same way, but it doesn't come back down. It goes up. That means there are action team young people who are more passionate about Jesus following their action team year, not diminishing. So pray for them, not just for their action team year, but whatever God will do with them next. Next slide. North Korea. We're praying for North Korea. We have people working and serving in North Korea. I won't mention their names, and if you can edit this bit out on a recording, that would be great. So, those two things to, to arm your praying, and there are uh, some other things around on, on the chairs, there's BMS Magazine Engage uh, and Prayer Guide. Some of you may well uh, receive that. Uh, if you're interested in using that material to arm your, uh, uh, your interest and your prayers, then please just ask. We'd love to send it to you free quarterly. Um, uh, if you find that that would be a, a useful read for you, then we, we'd be delighted to do that. As we come to Daniel 3 uh, in, in the last few minutes that, that we have together, I, I feel that I need to correct what may be a misunderstanding. We touched on this earlier on, and it's this notion that, that you might think that you're not a missionary because a missionary or a mission worker or an evangelist is someone who goes over there to tell someone else about Jesus. Well, that's only part true. The full truth is mission is a discipleship issue for all of us. We are all mission workers. We are all missionaries. We are all evangelists. That maybe scares you. It's not so much about where. It's about your relationship with Jesus that it gives you the confidence to take risks and speak out for him. So when did you last take a risk and speak out for Jesus with your family or your friends 
or your colleagues. In my uh, previous church, uh, where I pastored before I, I joined BMS, there was a lady in our congregation who jumped out of a perfectly decent aircraft with only a parachute and a bloke strapped to her back. I think that sounds risky. I don't know about you. <laughs> there's, uh, there's an ex-Marine that I, I met uh, also in, uh, in, in Taunton in Somerset, not part of our church. Um, but having been based in South Africa, he travels back there every now and again. And uh, he makes a point of walking across a skimpy metal bridge and jumping off into the 300-foot gorge below with some elastic tied around his ankles. I wouldn't. <laughs> that sounds risky. And then at the other end of the scale, there are those of us who wouldn't say boo to a goose. There are those of us, for example, who come up to a mini roundabout and stop. <laughs> you know who you are. Who look right and left for some reason, and right just in case a bus comes from behind the lamppost. You never know. And there are those of us who keep our savings in a biscuit tin under the bed because we don't trust the banks and we don't take risks. I guess most of us are somewhere between those extremes. But I am worried that too many followers of Jesus in the UK are too risk averse when it comes to sharing their faith about who Jesus is. Too many churches are risk averse when it comes to sharing their faith about Jesus. And that brings us to Daniel 3, to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they get caught out, and they get told on, and they get dragged before a furious Nebuchadnezzar because they didn't bow the knee when the music played. Now, let's be clear, they didn't have to. The orchestra could have played, they could have stopped what they were doing, could have turned around and faced this 90-foot statue that he had made. And they could have gone through the routine and nobody would have been wiser. But in their hearts, they would have been following their God. But that's not enough. And it wasn't for them. And let's make no mistake, when they defied Nebuchadnezzar, they thought they were going to die. They thought they were going to die in the flame. And the audacity of them when they are brought in front of Nebuchadnezzar, no wonder the guy was raging. He thought he was God. How dare these three young men speak as they did? Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Our God will save us. And, by the way, even if he doesn't, we're not going to worship you or the image that you've made. Oh, my word. Nebuchadnezzar flew off the handle. The furnace was heated up. The three were gagged and bound and thrown in so hot that the soldiers died at the entrance of the furnace. And what does Nebuchadnezzar see? Not three, but four. We don't know who the fourth was exactly, but I'll tell you what it means. It means when we stand up and take a risk for Jesus, He's right there with us. We have nothing to fear. And we love this story. Don't we love this story? Why do we love this story? We love this story because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the flames, not even smelling of smoke. Nebuchadnezzar has some kind of it wasn't a conversion experience exactly, because if you look at the end of the passage, what he says is, whoa, we all need to worship this guy's gods, because if you don't, I'll cut you up into pieces. <laughs> That's not quite the con conversion we're, we're looking for. But it had a huge impact on him. They took the risk. God was with them, and God delivered them. But what if... 
What if they had died in the flames? Would we say they were wrong to have stood up for Jesus? We had a couple living and working in Afghanistan. They came home to the UK uh, to visit their supporting churches and for uh, the birth of a child. While they were in the UK, the security situation deteriorated again in Afghanistan. Uh, an NGO worker was shot in broad daylight in Kabul. And they wrestled with the question about whether they should go back, them and four young children and a new baby. Should they go back? Fair question, actually. Because we're not talking about taking any silly old risk. Do you know what they concluded? The safest place for them to be is where God wants them to be. And they went back to Afghanistan. Actually, in their story, um, they relocated to work in Nepal. So from guns and bullets to earthquakes, I'm not sure which is less safe. But my prayer is that they will have a long and fruitful and successful ministry for the risks that they have taken for the sake and the cause of Christ. You see, ours is the job to stand up for Jesus. If we believe in a God who created this world and everything in it, if we believe in a God who gave His only Son, if we believe in a God who sustains the planet from week to week, day to day, month to month, year to year, if we believe that Jesus died on the cross, we believe that Jesus was buried, we believe that Jesus rose again, shouldn't we follow Him? Shouldn't we take the risk of opening our mouths and saying, Jesus loves you? What's the risk for you? People think you're a bit daft. They might do anyway. <laughs> they think you're a bit odd. They think you're a Bible basher that goes to church. I tell you, Jesus is worth more than that. My challenge to you is this. As individuals, as a couple, as families... What are the risks that God is asking you to take in order to make Jesus known? And I challenge you as a church, what are the risks that God is asking you to take in order to make Jesus known? Risk with some money. Risk with reputation, maybe. But the goal of making Jesus known And knowing that he's in there with us makes it all worth it. In the the Stuart Townend um, hymn that we sang earlier on, um, there is a a line in there that, that talks about not loving our lives so much that we shrink from facing death. I don't think you'll face death in this country. Other places, yeah. In the UK, not so much. What are the risks that you will take in order to make Jesus known? Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we can only say thank you for all that you have done in sending your Son to live among us, to die on the cross, to carry the punishment of our sin and shame. And that through his resurrection, to bring us life again, to bring us hope and a future and a purpose for living. Make us risk takers for Jesus as couples as individuals, as families as a church perhaps among us this morning there are one or two whom God is tapping on the shoulder and saying 
follow me. And following him might mean relocating elsewhere in his world. Father, give us courage in the Spirit. Give us confidence in the gospel. And give us the compassion of Jesus, the Savior. We pray in his name. Amen.